Hey everybody, welcome to Around the Twist, episode 247. It is May 11th, 2016, and it's going to be a very short show this week. I have, um, I think I've kind of hit a point of, like, knitting malaise on we, however you want to describe it. I have done basically no knitting this week, but I promised to show every week. I promised myself I would record every week for this year, so... Here I am. Uh, so let's move right into what's on my needles, or the one thing that I worked on. And that would be the Manly Socks. Sock, singular, I guess. These are going to be for the hubby. They are I'm using Osterman Step in the, I believe it's color 0024, which is a teal, dark blue, black, and gray stripe. So there's the whole thing. I'm knitting it up on a US-1 with 2.25 millimeter needle. It's my basic 72 stitch vanilla sock, but this one's going to have an afterthought heel to it. I'm already... I don't even remember where I was last week. That's the sad part. I think... I think? Was I on this blue stripe? I don't know. Ugh. So I at least finished the green, I think I finished the blue, I finished the green, and I'm probably two-thirds of the way through this next gray stripe. Um, probably have half again as much distance to go before I do the toe on this one. And yeah, I haven't even really been knitting that much at home. It's just, I don't know why, every time I sit down on the couch and I have two minutes to myself, I'm just like, meh. And, you know, you check Facebook, you check Instagram, and suddenly it's an hour and a half later and I've done nothing rather than reach behind the back of the couch over there and grab a project bag and do something instead of just kind of been sitting there. It's just kind of been a bleh week. Doesn't help that I worked the weekend, too. So, um, Monday was pretty much a wash because I was just exhausted from that. And, obviously, on my work weekend, I come home from work, I make dinner, and go to bed basically because I have to be up at 4 a.m. the next morning and work does not let me even if I even if I still work night shift work does not let me knit at work. Hi Goober. Do you want to come up? Come on. Oh you're gonna get a Phoebe cameo. Come on. You wanna come say hi? Come here fat dog. Hi. You have not seen Phoebe in a while. She normally sleeps and wheezes her way through the podcast from across the room, but she's still around. My old lady dog is going to be 12 at the end of June. Oh, you will be in a snuggler today. Yeah? Oh, we're just going to flop. Okay. Don't get after me when I stop petting you. I've got stuff to do, dog. Okay? <coughs> Sorry. So, the Osterman step... It's not my favorite yarn to knit with, but it's going to be a good workhorse yarn for socks for the hubby so he doesn't wear through them. He hasn't managed to do so with any of the other pairs of socks I've knit for him, but he also doesn't wear them a whole lot. His feet get really hot a lot of the time. So unless we're going out somewhere, that's like his version of date clothes. He wears the socks I knit for him uh, with jeans and a t-shirt. Or um, I can tell when he's sick. Or when he's cold because he'll come out wearing a pair of the sock, the hand knit socks that he has. Uh, so that's it for what's on the needles. I didn't do any crocheting this week. I didn't touch the sweater. I didn't, yeah, I, I don't know. This week's just been odd. I don't know what it is. It's like I looked up and went, oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's Wednesday. I have nothing to show. So I'm so sorry. I know everyone's going to get after me for saying sorry that it's okay to not have progress, but darn it, I might have progress to show you. I do have some progress for pokey things. Uh, I did, um, so I wasn't able to show you my progress last week because my, I came back from my hair appointment and all of my, well, my once upon a time cross stitch anyway, was in the spare bedroom, which is where we put Tara down for her nap so she doesn't bother Gabe. So I couldn't go in and get it without waking her up, so I didn't. So you're able to see this week. I had finished July, July? August, oh my gosh, August. Uh, 
which was the Bremen Town Musicians, which is a Grimm Brothers fairy tale right here. And I started on September, which is going to be Rapunzel. So I finished the trees, and I've got the base of the tower done, and some of her flowing golden hair coming down the front of the tower. I think Rapunzel's going a lot faster because it has big splooches, splooches. I'm just making up words now. Big areas of solid color. It's not like the Bremen Town musicians that were just you know, a bit here, a bit here, a bit here, and kind of skipping all over the place. <coughs> I feel like those months, although I did the Bremen Town Musicians pretty quick, but previous months, like, um, well, you can't really see the three bears. Um, well, even like January, Snow White up here. Um, there were just little, little bits of color here and there, so it's like, I'd finish one soap bubble and be like, yeah, I got a lot done, and I'd set it down, and then I'd realize, oh, I only did like eight stitches. Oh, I finished something. Oh, wait. <laughs> so I feel, I feel like the months that have bigger swaths of color, and it feels to me like I get them done faster. So working on Rapunzel, now there is going to be, there are a couple birds and things up higher that are smaller bits of color, but I'll, I'll do those last and it'll go quicker, I think. So, uh, pattern is the Frosted Pumpkins, from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It is their Once Upon a Time sampler. It's, and once I finish Rapunzel, I'll be three quarters of the way through and this thing is massive. You can see that's an 11 by 11 Q-snap. Well, it's not a Q-snap, it's, I can't remember what the, house brand is for Hobby Lobby, but I got it at Hobby Lobby. It's basically a Q-snap. 11 by 11, and I think the whole thing is meant to be 11 by 17, if I remember right, for finished dimensions. So it's a big stitch. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm really liking it. Um, I'm already planning for the next ones and we'll see how that goes um, since this is my nap time needle working. If you'd like to stitch with me while your kids nap, while your hubby naps, while you've got a break at work, um, do a hashtag for me on Instagram called Naptime Needle Worker if you want to. If that's the only time basically that you get to work on your knitting, your stitching, your crochet, your anything, if that's your only chance to knit is while hubby's outside, uh, your significant other's outside mowing the lawn, and that's the only time you have to pick up something when they're home, or while your kids are napping, or while they're at playgroup, or preschool, or wherever, just join in. It's something fun. I'm not doing prizes or anything, but it's something bring those of us together that have limited crafting time, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, that's it. That's all that I did this week. It's kind of pathetic, actually. Especially now that I see it. Come on, Daisy. Come on. Everyone wants to see you, too. Come on. Come on. Daisy Duke is getting very fluffy. Hi. Are you going to be cute? No, you're going to keep your ears back. I'm not going to show your Yoda ears. All right. Well, now you've seen both the dogs. So, um, moving on to various and sundry. We do have, um, oh gosh, we do, sorry, I thought I had the any questions thread open and evidently I don't. Uh, one event is coming up that is the Estes Park Wool Market. That is the second weekend in June and I don't have show notes written down. I'm winging this since I had so little to do. Um, I will be there for sure on Saturday with hubby and kids in tow. Uh, so that's actually going to tie into any questions. I'm going to skip straight to that. So if anyone's going, I will see you on Saturday. So um, I'm going to answer the second question first since that's interesting. Kpar62 wants to know, are you planning on attending the Estes Park Wool Market this year? Yes. Yes, I am. I will definitely be there on Saturday. And will the twins be coming to play with the sheep? Yes, yes they will. Um, it's going to be a family outing, so all four of us are going to be there. As of right now, that's the plan anyway. Uh, so mark that we answered that one. And then Grandonna 
uh, said, I love the sweater you wore in episode 235. Did you knit it? What pattern is it? Love the show. Was thrilled when he started recording again. Uh, Donna, no, I didn't knit it. Uh, that was actually a gift from my mom uh, for Christmas three years ago, maybe. <coughs> the pattern, I brought it out so I'd have something to show. The pattern is called, I believe, The Old Man and the Sea. It was designed by Mel from the Single Hand and Knits podcast, who she's just getting ready to move to, I believe it's the Virgin Islands, soon. Um, I actually wore this sweater quite a lot when I was pregnant with the twins because it was summer, but I needed a layering piece, and it had, there's no closures on it. My mom did get me, like, little, um, oh my goodness, like hook and eye type buttons, but clasps, that's the word I'm looking for, clasps, like pewter clasps, I just haven't ever sewn them on, because it's just easier for me to use a shawl pin like I did in the show. So the features of Old Man in the Sea, it's got short sleeves, which I'm sure you could lengthen, that have a little mesh detail on them. That mesh detail is also down the sides, and on the sides it's bordered by a cable. Um, and it's like that the whole way around. And the rest of it's all garter stitch. And the first time I wore it, actually, I didn't even realize I wore it inside out. And no one noticed and thought it was such a cool sweater. And then I showed it to Mel, and she asked me what it was, because we were at SSK, and I was like, well, this is your old man in the sea. And she looked and she goes, oh, you're wearing it inside out. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've been wearing it that way for the, like, the whole day. And it wasn't until dinner time she pointed that out to me. So I felt like a complete goob for not noticing the sweater was inside out. So usually what I do, because I don't like having stuff closed up around my neck, even my t-shirt's kind of like, it's too high. Um, so rather than fasten it at the top, I usually either flip it back like lapels and then cross it over, which this sweater has tons of give to it, which was the beauty of wearing it when I was pregnant, is it fit over everything. And then I'll do a shawl pin, like right at my bust line, kind of at the the point where you put um, the non-negotiable button when you're placing buttons. You always want a button right at the bust line, because that's always where, if you're going to get a gap, it's going to be there. Anyone that has a chest knows that. Um, so... I put that there. I believe on the show though I, that I actually folded it in to make more like a deep V. So this it's really really a versatile sweater. It's really nice to have. Um, you can sorry, I'm taking it back off because I'm too warm. If you go over to my mom's project page, uh, which on Ravelry her username is Mama Teja, M A M A T E J A. Uh, I'm sure you can find it. You might have to scroll down through her project page a little bit to see it. But it is there. Let's see. So, Old Man in the Sea. And no, I did not knit it. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry, but... Uh, it's not one of the sweaters that I've knitted, so... There you have it. Hope that answers some questions. Hopefully I'll have a lot more knitting for next week. I'm Again, I'm so sorry for the short show, but hey, more free time for you guys to knit. I guess until next week, everybody, happy knitting.